finite dimensional or a given G module that um, uh, uh, well, this module uh, M tilde is polynomial, probably I don't know. Uh, then associated variety of this idea of IM is, is precisely the closure uh, of my important work on this is just uh, RG or G. Our new important element P, which is the same here. So now I have to explain what associated variety is. Uh, so the associated variety. Uh, with a five, or now we have many ideas in X. Um, <coughs> these define the scholars. So, how we define uh, associated variety? Now we look, uh, we look at uh, uh, I. And this is a uh, uh, G stable ideal, not G stable ideal uh, of the your G, which is of course just a symmetric algebra of G, and we identify it with a symmetric algebra of G star. And uh, so after this identification, then uh, uh, we define the A of phi to be the zero order. Of all common zeros of, uh, of zero. Uh, and this, yeah, we regard this in, uh, in G, or G star, uh, after this identification. And then uh, this part here that uh, the central intersection uh, of I with the center is a maximal ideal implies that. Uh, We have uh, more uh, so as uh, intersection of phi is uh, in the center it is maximal, and uh, G is the maximal idea we get uh, uh, the associated variety of phi is uh, <coughs> is the set of all common zeros of phi. Uh, uh, for basic invariants of one of L, because these things actually uh, uh, generate uh, the same type, and this is known to be the no bottom problem. So, so from that we use uh, the associated variety actually lives in, in the no bottom form uh, of the uh, and Joseph proof uh, very important theory. Uh, so I can prove that uh, this variety is irreducible. It's irreducible. And that implies that, uh, um, so it's an irreducible, and of course it is RG stable and contains an important cone. This implies that the apply <coughs> is a closure of an important cone. There are several uh, proofs of Joseph's theorem uh, that woven uh, from a shorter proof, and there is the results in other proof due to Ginsburg, uh, and maybe more. So, um, now there is a way uh, to attach to a primitive ideal uh, no quotient orbit, and then we, uh, we can stratify x so that x or be the set of all primitive ideals phi in x such that uh, the associated variety of phi is a closure. So we, we have a finite specification because um, um, there are finitely many uh, new orbits, so of course uh, 
just an example. Uh, and we have, of course, zero is also an important property. This consists of all primitive ideals of finite co dimension, and this is uh, a discrete set. So it's uh, all manipulators, all primitive ideals of the form by lambda, uh, lambda uh, alpha check uh, belongs to uh, Z given zero for all uh, simple roots one. I will denote by part the set of simple roots. So in, in Joseph's theorem, uh -huh. I, I is a, a primitive idea? Yes, I, is, uh, in, I has to be a primitive idea. So, uh, I in X, of course. And this is, it's not automatic, the, the associated variety is easy to do. Oh, no. There is no uh, obvious proof of that. Uh, Joseph's proof uh, was uh, very involved. And then involved and simplified some arguments. Uh, you can, uh, it's, uh, it's published in confidence proceedings. There is also proof. Like, but this is true. It is always true. There are several proofs of it. This implies your result. Sorry? This result implies your theorem. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, well, what, I, what I'm saying here is, well, we know this is true uh, for any primitive idea. But if you look at this particular primitive idea, then we obtain precisely the important part of this. Ah, yeah. 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 Th that's the point here, yes. So, and of course, uh, if you just uh, look at this, um, uh, uh, a natural question arises then. Uh, yeah, I should say that in general, uh, so we see that this set is discrete. However, if you look at, at the opposite extreme, if you look at uh, uh, those primitive ideals which are minimal, which, are, which have associated variety, the whole Newton cone, then almost all primitive ideals would, would fit in there. So that would be a huge set. So it would cover all nearly everything. But uh, for some Newton orbit, in particular for the so-called rigid ones, uh, it's a very subtle problem how to describe this set. So, um, now, uh, so I made a conjecture in the same paper, uh, zero seven, uh, uh, for any uh, uh, for any uh, I in, uh, for any primitive idea. Uh, this associated variety for e bar there is uh, um, a reducible finite dimensional UG module M module M such that I is equal to I M. And um, so here there are um, two questions. Uh, which you can see. First of all, it is not at all clear whether uh, UGE admits uh, finite dimensional representation. But that uh, I proved uh, by using reduction module P and by using uh, cuts by spider conjecture. So uh, Losev uh, a bit later found a completely different proof by using his decomposition theory. So instead of reducing mod P, he completed UG in a subtle way. So there is a theorem. Uh, um, so it was uh, uh, proved by reduction mod P, and then also proved it. There is another proof uh, due to Ginsburg, which appears later. <coughs> but any finite uh, uh, algebra UG admits uh, admits finite uh, dimensional. Uh, very reducible uh, representation. Uh, this uh, this relied uh, 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 both proofs, uh, and also Ginsburg proof uh, uh, uses uh, the following important result. Uh, at the very end, so it uses the following result uh, theory. This was conjectured, I think, by Borjo in the 70s, and that was proved by Barbosch and Morgan. First, they 
like in one paper they treated uh, classical algebra and in the other paper perceptual algebra. So it comes in two long papers and it says that uh, this set, which is also known of this, is non empty for any uh, important word. So again, my proof relied on uh, reduction module P. Losev's proof uh, was based on the composition theory, and Ginsburg's proof uh, uh, used the uh, um, notion he introduced of Harish Chandra by modules. Uh -huh. So this, this EU theorem 2007, should that be I and tilde maybe? Uh, 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 right, upper board? You mean here? No, and uh, right, uh, upper board. Oh, you uh, mean here? The upper board and then on the right. Upper board and then on the right. In 2007, should it be I am tilde? No, no, no. no I am tilde does not exist. M tilde is just a creative equivalent. Uh, but you say, so you, you buy, is it then not a UG module? Because you M did not define that. Uh, no, but I can still use annotation. I mean, I mean, it's my choice. If you that's look how, at the right board. That's how I prefer to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it, it's an annihilator. It's an annihilator of M tilde, but it uh, depends on it. Okay. okay. So, so uh -huh. it's exactly the conjecture. Yeah, that's exactly the conjecture. So conjecture holds. But, uh, but there is um, there's more to it. Once this uh, was proven, uh, I had some numerical experiments with this lawsuit, uh, but uh, and then I made a stronger conjecture, which he later proved. Well, uh, before I can talk about it, I just uh, I need to raise something. So um, there is one point here uh, I have to explain. Uh, a primitive ideal. Uh, uh, can be obtained as, in general, as an annihilator of many different irreducible geometry. However, if you have a primitive idea of finite co-dimension, then it can annihilate only one up to a period. So there is uh, a distinction here. Now, um, so recall that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, this group uh, CER uh, so the connected component so uh, preserves all two-sided ideas uh, of UG. In particular, it preserves all uh, 
those target ideals of finite codimension or primitive ideals of kind finite codimension, which are of importance here. So therefore, um, uh, uh, the group uh, gamma, which was uh, which was defined as C, uh, is just a component group, a finite group. Uh, it's on, uh, uh, on the set of uh, on the set of all uh, primitive ideals of finite codimension uh, in UG. So we have a natural action uh, of gamma uh, on this set, uh, and hence that's on, on, on the set of, uh, of all Isaac classes uh, of irreducible, of finite dimensional irreducible UG1. So here we use a one-to-one uh, -one correspondence with these ideals and isomorphic class. <coughs> so, um, so how does it end? So if you have an isa class M, then you can uh, apply gamma, and the result will be just a twist of uh, M by gamma. Gamma belongs to gamma. Uh, and this is our, our group action. Also note that uh, 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 M, uh, so if, uh, uh, if M is isomorphic to M prime, uh, these are finite dimensional, would be reducible. Then uh, uh, I M is equal to I M prime. I M prime. So we can speak. of a primitive idea uh, associated with this other This is essentially uh, uh, Losev's dagger map, but I, I don't want to go into it. <coughs> now, uh, on this is, now I can state a uh, conjecture I made. Uh, so, which is also proof now. Uh, so I made a conjecture that I am uh, is equal to I am prime. So a primitive ideal, the same primitive ideal can be obtained from different uh, finite dimensional reducible UG modules. But I conjecture this can be the Isaac class of M prime uh, is obtained uh, is equal to Isaac class of M. Apply gamma for some for some gamma, and that was uh, much harder to prove. But this was proved by Lusser. Uh, this conjecture uh, proved by Lusser in the paper in Duke, Mass Journal, which appeared maybe a couple of years ago. Okay, so now we have uh, a really. Uh, quite a uh, nice picture, except that we, in general, don't know uh, how, how the group gamma is on, uh, on these things. Now we introduce uh, that uh, uh, gamma M it is a stabilizer, a stabilizer of the plus of M uh, in gamma. And this is uh, a subgroup. Every uh, M uh, gives rise to such a sample. Um, now I'd like to uh, discuss uh, that will be probably part uh, for. Uh, I'm going to discuss um, associated cycle. of a 
payments of hydrogen. So associated cycle is, is a somewhat uh, more subtle and variant uh, than the associated variety. It allows to measure the rate of growth of homogeneous component of the group. So um, let's probably take by. Sorry, just go ahead in India. Sorry? Just go ahead in India. Over zero, no? These claims are more easy. Over zero? For the omnipotent orbit zero. Is for the omnipotent orbit zero. Very difficult. Well, for the omnipotent orbit uh, zero, the final W algebra is just U of G. And yeah. So this theory, but then uh, for the for all the zero, we know uh, we know this set at zero. It's just an annihilator of finite dimensionally reducible model. Yeah. So in this case, there is no problem to describe at zero. Okay. So let I be um, uh, next, and um, when uh, and then let um, J be. Uh, radical of, of this idea of good harm. And this is an idea of uh, a prime idea of, um, well, in fact, it's a defining idea of, of the important topic of, uh, of uh, uh, CLG, Okay, <clears throat> and then we um, we define uh, by A the quotient. It's, an, uh, it's going to be a, a module or a symmetric uh, over S of G. So let A be. Uh, um, S of G divided by the <coughs> So then computed algebra uh, 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 tells you that there is a filtration, there is a uh, S of G module filtration. Of A, so we have zero uh, and that is the zero is contained in a one, contained in some a q, say, uh, which is equal to a, such that uh, each portion is a cyclic module, uh, a pi uh, a pi by a pi minus one as a s of g module, size of not s of g by pi. For some, uh, for some prime idea, the uh, I of S of G. So, of course, such uh, application is not unique. There are examples where you can uh, obtain different uh, refutations of this type. However, be interested in uh, in those PI, so each. Uh, pi contains, uh, of course, each pi contains a uh, good i. Because we started uh, from good i, good i will annihilate all this stuff here. Yeah? So all members of the filtration as well. But uh, hence, since it is prime, so it also contains uh, j, which is the radical of, uh, which is the radical of, uh, of good i. And then we, uh, we define the multiplicity uh, <coughs> and that is going to be well defined. So uh, let uh, the multiplicity of four Four is associated variety uh, by uh, in uh, in the primitive portion uh, to be so here is the notation uh, 
it's going to be the number of those i uh, between 1 and q for which pi is, is actually equal to j. So there will be some inessential uh, primitive ideals which will contain j properly, but the number of those for which pi is equal to j is independent of the choice of the equation, despite some results of commutative algebra. I say that's proved in Matsumura. So, um, so what is proved in Matsumura? Well, that, that you can you can define this uh, you know, properly, and so the number you obtain is independent of the choice of that. <coughs> now, <coughs> so uh, what's the proof uh, by using that? Uh, is proof of conjecture I may uh, be a uh, found a beautiful formula for this multiplicity. So theory, uh, there is a very nice uh, formula for this multiplicity. So suppose uh, uh, i is equal to i v, where v is uh, finite dimensionally reducible uh, u g multiple. Well, we're only interested in, in such primitive ideals now because uh, they all have this form. Uh, then uh, uh, the multiplicity, you know the associated variety will be exactly equal E. That's our associated variety. And the multiplicity of the old G divided by R E is equal to so the index of this subgroup gamma e are introduced times uh, dimension of this square. So. <coughs> this formula surely deserves to be put in the box like that. Excuse me. I'm not sure I understand the definition of the multiplicity of O because Okay. Yes, the multiplicity of four is uh, the number of those. Uh, uh, so the number of uh, of indices that was the number of members in this filtration for and which pi is equal to j. And how does it depend on O? Sorry? How does it depend on O? So it, I it depends on I, on the primitive ideal. It measures the size of the portion, U of G mod I. It so you can have lots of primitive ideals. And, uh, and the quotient, uh, and this quotient, S of G uh, by good I might have uh, lots of quotients of this form, S of G divided by J, not just one, but lots of Okay? So what is the relation with For because example, well, for example, if you have, well, the, 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 trivial, the trivial example, if you take a uh, primitive ideal of finite codimension, then we know this, this quotient will be just a finite dimensional module. And then uh, this multiplicity will become dimensional. It's still not clear how it depends on O, I think. Sorry? It's not clear how it depends on O. Or is I, is I in X sub O, maybe? Yes, like O is equal to the, to the associated variety of I. Yes. How does the multiplicity depend on O? It's okay. Yeah. On the O. Yeah, J is defining like the Well, because. Well, J is, a uh, J is a defining ideal of, uh, of, the, of the important object. That's how it depends on it. Yeah, so... It depends... We uh, can it change, it always fits. Like but if it's fixed, how can you change it? No, my question is uh -huh. fixed. Well, yes, but the statement is, is true for any primitive ideal. So, we have a primitive ideal which will have associated rights. This will give us J. But the primitive, there are lots of primitive ideas with a given associated rights. For instance, you have one, uh, you take the corresponding module, you tensor it with some finite dimensional module, and then you take quotients. You have many more primitive ideas with the same rights. Mm -hmm. So this sets are big. And, uh, but when you do this, uh, the size of this quotient will, will change. Sorry. Yes. So for, for example, for, 
is for e equal zero, uh -huh. then gamma v is equal to gamma, and they yes. are just matrices. Yes. And so you, you yeah. Do. Precisely. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it's very uh, actually it's very instructive to look at this formula in the very trivial case when uh, uh, when uh, <coughs> our orbit is just zero. In this case, u of g e is equal to u of g. Gamma is trivial, so we'll have not one here. And v is just the finite dimension of the reducible UG module. And so the multiplicity becomes dimension of V squared. So this is, that's why it is a much more subtle uh, invariant for a primitive idea. It measures the size rather than just the alpha trivial dimension. So, and that's why it is uh, important. <coughs> Now I'd like to introduce another um, <coughs> invariant of a primitive ideal, which is called the Golderam. In fact, it's the two program. The relationship with multiplicity is somewhat uh, subtle. <coughs> so now, uh, if I is uh, is an X, uh, then uh, well, I is a, a prime ideal then uh, u of g mod i sorry the pi do not that do the pi need to be g invariant pi not in this definition not in they don't have to be uh, <clears throat> so then it, it is a prime uh an ethereum ring so it's left and right necessary. So therefore, uh, we can apply uh, Golden theorem uh, to, to this uh, primitive quotient U of G uh, mod I. So let R be uh, the set of all regular elements of the primitive quotients, which in uh, Nasserian ring theory means non-zero divided. So let R be uh, the set of all uh, R in, in U of G. Of i such that r is regular, that means a, a non zero divide. Uh, that means not a zero divide. Uh, in, a, in the quotient. And this set, by Gauthier theorem, this set uh, uh, satisfies. Uh, left and right or order conditions. So, uh, so then R is multiplicative. So the product of non-zero divisors is again non-zero divisor. Uh, and uh, <coughs> satisfies uh, order condition. So this means that uh, uh, for all, uh, well, the most important thing will be for all R in R and U in, in this quotient, uh, U mod I. Let me use this shorthand notation uh, for U of G. Uh, there exists R prime in R and u prime to u, such that uh, uh, when you multiply r u, it's going to be equal to u prime mod i. So, oh, sorry, is u in u modulo i, or u, uh, in uh, uh, u in u, yeah, thank you. u prime in u mod i, such that. So, uh, that means we can, we can actually form uh, the uh, ring of fractions uh, by using uh, by using this set. Uh. So therefore, uh, 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 can form a quotient <coughs> Uh, 
and that is going to be R inverse uh, unit. So, uh, and that multiplication is defined in, in a natural way, and so is the addition. Uh, so, in this uh, new ring, uh, all elements of R are crossing the uh, So, by Golgi's theorem, I told you say on this ring is, uh, is prime Arsenian. It was an Assyrian, now it's Arsenian. And therefore, it's isomorphic to, uh, by the theory of Arsenian ring, it's isomorphic to a matrix algebra of size, some size T, which depends on I. Uh, maybe I should uh, over a sphere field DR. So for for some T a natural number, so <coughs> and uh, a sphere field. It is really a skew field because it's very big. Uh, one cannot call, call it in characteristic zero a central division algebra. So it's just very big. Uh, and a skew field uh, zero. So now this number T is called the Volta run. Here, D. <coughs> um, is uh, is the other guy's Rankel U model is uh, is a golden of U model and uh, Ti is a golden tip. New objects obtain uh, uh, the lab one obtains uh, from uh, localization. Now uh, uh, there is uh, in ring theory there is a nice uh, characterization of uh, of the Golderan. Uh, so Golderan is uh, actually equal to the maximum number maximum number of n n is uh, a natural number such that there exists uh, x in uh, u mod i uh, such that x to the n is 0 and x to the n minus 1 is 1. So it's the largest new potency class of new potent elements uh, in the quotient. And if you uh, just the analogy is um, um, primitive ideals of finite codimension is very useful here because in this case just this gold field just becomes the base field C, so it's very small, and the gold around is just the dimension uh, of the corresponding irreducible group. And so then you can see, of course, the size of uh, the dimension of V will be equal to the largest new potency class of matrices in this case. However, in the general situation, this DI will be deep. And um, the most interesting case is uh, when D is 1, uh, when the world around is 1. So we say uh, that I is completely fine. This completely fine. <coughs> uh, if, um, if, if the world around is 1. <coughs> And it's a, a classical open problem in this theory, which is very hard uh, in general to classify all completely prime primitive ideas. Um, 
There is also a conjecture of Joseph about the structure of DI. but for primitive quotient. Well, of course, for P positive, for P characteristic P. 
So Humphrey's conjecture asks whether there is a minimal representation of this given P character of dimension P to the D, and this is sort of a characteristic zero version of the same thing. This one is maybe not. Um, well, it's a more, uh, more complicated interpreter. Yes, in a sense, yeah. Um, Which one? Well, if, uh, well, one needs a bit more, but if we have a one-dimensional representation, then we can construct uh, a one-dimensional representation of finite W algebra, at least when P is very big, characteristic of P. But I will talk about it after the day. Um, but now I would like to um, apply this uh, formula of Flossip. So if you uh, look at uh, Flossip's formula, uh, so we say uh, I in uh, S or E is multiplicity free. If um, well, if the multiplicity is equal to one, yeah. so if you look uh, at the, the, the Loisev's formula, uh, this is a theorem uh, to if the multiplicity is equal to, to one, so uh, i is equal to i e. It's equivalent to uh, the following. So gamma v should be equal to gamma, and uh, dimensional v should be equal to one. So in view of this uh, inequality, in view of this inequality, uh, any uh, multiplicity free. Uh, I so is completely fine. So if you manage to uh, construct uh, multiplicity free primitive ideals, then we can construct a completely fine uh, primitive ideal. And there is a theorem. Uh, which is, uh, was proved by Rani Berlitsky in 1980, and then reproved by Losev in this paper. He was unaware of this proof because it was published in the conference. Uh, so such I exists, uh, so uh, multiplicity free. Uh, primitive ideals exist. But <coughs> if G is classical, which means type A, B, C, D, if G is classical. So type J, B, C, D. And the proof is a uh, geometric proof that uses uh, results of uh, uh, craft and purchasing on the important orbital approaches in, uh, in the algebra of type B, C, and D. In type A, this was known uh, from work of Madrian. I should also mention it. Mm -hmm. For all, for all E. Hmm? Mm -hmm. For all E, yes. For all, e. For, for all uh, yeah. Uh, it exists for all E, yes, I should have. For all the important orbits, so. I mean, for exception, it's a uh, No, no, it's no proof. Uh, but I don't want to talk about it. But it's, it's still actually a long story. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's of also conjecture that uh, they should exist uh, in, in his paper in GEMS, that they should also exist for uh, uh, exceptional reality. I think it will be a good time uh, to stop for, for seven minutes and then we'll resume. Yes. Yeah. So this is an 
inequality of uh, uh, loss of proof implies that if uh, you have a one dimensional uh, UJ module B, uh, <coughs> then the corresponding periods of idealists are completely prime. Uh, so I, I conjecture that and there is inequality of proofs this. Uh, but I was wondering whether a stronger uh, statement uh, should hold. And then I, I proved the following theorem. There's a paper in uh, transformation groups uh, with a special issue uh, uh, dedicated to Tony Springer. Uh, <coughs> so the theorem is, is as follows. Uh, <coughs> for any uh, uh, primitive ideals, I B, where B minor dimension of the reducible uh, G is modular. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, dimension of B divided by the program of the quotient. Uh, this number is uh, <coughs> is a positive condition. <coughs> uh, I think I do have to it. And this number, which of course uh, is stronger than uh, the inequality above. So, uh, uh, moreover, uh, yeah, let's call this number QB. So sometimes it's called uh, scale factor, so it's a non-negative integer. Uh, moreover, uh, QB is equal to 1 if, uh, if the Goldie field, uh, so this function will be denoted E by E. It's isomorphic to a wide script. It's isomorphic to a wide script. Again, uh, I used uh, reduction mode P and uh, some uh, theory of uh, finitely generated uh, Algebras satisfying polynomial identity. Um, <coughs> so, uh, since uh, uh, in view of uh, of Joseph theorem I mentioned earlier, uh, in fact, we have. Always have equality. The dimension of E is equal to the Golder. Because Joseph proved uh, his conjecture in uh, in type A. This uh, equality was later reproved by Brandon in paper uh, published uh, in composition um, by different methods by uh, characteristic theory. But D, this stupid D is isomorphic to what? So you know, so when the rank is one, right? Yes. Uh, so, so we have this equality whenever we know that the structure of, of the stupid. So if the Gelfand Kirill conjecture does hold for this quotient, uh, for the Golden field, then uh, we actually have to be equal to one, which is the same as to say that the gold around is dimensional here. But in general, it's just a non-negative uh, So, um, and then, uh, <coughs> Losev uh, pointed out to me an example in McGovern's memoir. 
where, uh, where we have uh, the following situation. And this, I think, uh, was he was alerted to this by Wogan. So uh, by a result of McGowan, uh, who studied maximal completely prime primitive ideals in the algebras of classical types, and um, so we have G uh, S P to N, uh, I think type C3, so I have given you the uh, And then we take uh, I, uh, the ideal uh, uh, I minus rho over 2. So the central character will be uh, minus rho over 2 plus rho, so it will become plus rho over 2, the central character, or more precisely the orbital. So in this case, uh, the orbit, uh, the associated variety for this primitive ideal uh, is uh, R and T uh, corresponds to a partition, lambda, which has all parts, or all journal blocks of size 2. And so it will be uh, M of them. So there is such a, it's a uh, spherical nilpotent orbit. It's also is uh, even. And then uh, in this case, uh, uh, in this case, I is completely prime. McGovern has a very complicated uh, combinatorial formula for Goldenham. And using this formula, one observes that I is completely prime. But uh, multiplicity is big, I think. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I think it's equal to 2 to the m, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe 2 to the m minus 1. And the component group uh, in this case is z not to z. So, um, so then we see that 2 to the n minus 1 by Wasser's formula will be gamma by gamma n. Um, yeah, of course, this, this idea will also have the form uh, I n for n finite dimensional irreducible UG module, SP to n. And so therefore, uh, Uh, and this implies that, uh, so this is, uh, so this number is either 1 or 2, so it's very small, and this implies the dimension of L has to be bigger than 1 in this case. The dimension of M bigger than 1, but the gold around is 1, because it's completely prime. So this implies, uh, so in this case, QM, is bigger uh, than one. And therefore, uh, TI is, is not a one scoop. So Joseph's conjecture fails in this case. But it's not a wild The behavior of these uh, numbers is, uh, is very uh, strange. Uh, for instance, very recently in the paper, which just appeared in Indicionis, uh, Loisev shows that uh, if I has uh, integral central character, which means the corresponding order will be special in the sense of Lustig, uh, if uh, I has integral uh, central character and G is classical, uh, then this number QV is always equal to 1. So, however, well, in this case, uh, G is classical, but the central character is not integral. It's one half one. 
So we just make uh, so in this example, the central character is uh, uh, rho over two. It's not integral, and we have to be uh, qm or bigger than one. Since we're interested in one dimensional representations of uh, finite double algebra, we produce the following algebra. So we define, uh, so let I see the non commutator idea, uh, the two sided idea of UGE uh, generated by. Of commutators, uh, U B minus U, where U and B are U G, and then uh, let U G appear uh, is a quotient by this idea. And now this is a commutative, uh, finitely generated algebra. Uh, commutative, finitely generated uh, C algebra. And then, uh, so therefore, <coughs> we can we denote by its uh, maximal spectrum. So that will be the maximal spectrum of this algebra. Uh, and this is an affine variety. Uh, in fact, it uh, can be embedded into a R affine space where R is dimensional to central um, Each part, so then uh, E parameterizes. parameterizes the one dimensional representation <coughs> one dimensional representation is uh, completely so if you want to prove that E is uh, non-empty this variety is non-empty ideally we would like to compute dimension of this variety and get hold on the reducible components because uh, especially the isolated components say, of dimension zero would give you some really interesting uh, completely parent primitive ideas, uh, which cannot be obtained by parabolic induction. Now, I would like to describe uh, the dimension of this. Uh, But in order to do this, I have to recall uh, uh, induction, loose exponents in induction, and also I have to say something about uh, uh, sheets. Uh, in <coughs> so, uh, so I let M be a natural number. <coughs> G sub m do not the set of all x and g such the dimension of the centralizer of x is equal to uh, m. <coughs> so this is uh, a locally closed uh, subset. Uh, and uh, so the irreducible components of GM are called the uh, sheet. Irreducible components. Sheets and so uh, th these were studied by Borko and Kraft in the 70s. Uh, so they, they proved that each uh, 
which uh, S of G uh, contains a unique and important order. Which, uh, however, can belong to different shapes. And, to, uh, and so, later, work of classified uh, these things in the following uh, fashion. So, uh, for that, we need a notion of. Uh, uh, induction of orbits, which was introduced by Lustig and Spalkenstein. Uh, well, <clears throat> well, let's, uh, I'll, let I'll be uh, uh, the a proper navy uh, there is about the brain G and then we can write <coughs> uh, the corresponding triangle of the composition uh, N minus plus L plus N plus and then when we have a parabolic subalgebra L plus N plus uh, this is parabolic. Uh, and then suppose that you have uh, a new potent orbit uh, in, in L. So let E0 be uh, new potent element of L, then it belongs to the direct subalgebra. This also works, by the way, in characteristic P. But in both characteristics, the description is slightly different. It was, uh, Studied by Spalkenstein. <coughs> then we take, uh, I'm taking an important element, and, uh, uh, and then we set O0, uh, oh, sorry, O0 to 0, it's just uh, the corresponding adjoint of this. Uh, then uh, we may consider the following set to take the risky closure of, of this thing. Uh, it's an irreducible variety, and then we add to this n plus. So then this irreducible, the risky closed subset lives uh, in the new bottom cone of G entire. <coughs> so it sits here, and hence, uh, since there are finitely many new quarter border, so there is uh, a unique uh, E uh, in. Uh, Man of G is such that um, the orbit of it, the intersection uh, of the orbit is, uh, is this thing. Uh, such that this thing is that. Uh, in here. So, and then we say that. Um, uh, e zero is induced. Uh, uh, e is induced from E zero. So starting with uh, E zero, we obtain uh, an important order in E. One can prove that this is independent of the choice of uh, of this decomposition here. Only depends on L. So we say uh, uh, E is induced. from E0, and then we write that OE is equal to, sometimes people use this notation of L, because it only depends on L. Uh, so um, if we have an important orbit which cannot be obtained by this construction, we say that E is rigid. Uh, so if uh, E is not induced, and we say 
uh, not induced from a proper layer. And we say it is rigid. And uh, all uh, rigid non-potent orbits are classified in classical types by Kempkin and Falkenstein. And in fact, G2 and F4 by Borho, and in type P by Elashvili, and maybe some other. For example, in type uh, 0 is always rigid, cannot be obtained by induction. And in type EA, there are 17 non zero rigid. Uh, but in fact, E6, I think there are only three. So, <clears throat> uh, yes. uh, now how can we uh, describe uh, the sheets? So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so let E be a very important element of the mass. And then, uh, uh, and suppose, so if uh, the three is rigid, uh, then S is just one single orbit, so it's just uh, one orbit. Now, if it is induced, uh, some Lewis subalgebra and some Lewis subalgebra L yeah, then uh, uh, S contains uh, <coughs> it contains an open decomposition class uh, open uh, D uh, uh, D0 uh, L and so I'm going to define it <coughs> So uh, it will contain R G. This the composition class is uh, uh, is G stable. So it contains E zero plus the center of, of this very and I take not all elements at the center but regular. So uh, T uh, belongs to that regular if I believe the centralizer of this element to is equal to L. A priori it could be given. So, and this is, uh, and so Borko proved that uh, at least description actually um, <coughs> parameterizes, enables one to parameterize all sheets. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence uh, between the sheets, so it's one-to-one -one correspondence and uh, G conjugacy classes. Uh, L to zero where uh, L is heavy and D zero is rigid. So also there is a geometric portion uh, because all, all G orbits and X have the same dimension, there is a geometric portion. parameterizes the orbits in the shape uh, and uh, a dimension uh, of this is called the rank of S. And the rank of S is the dimension of this portion uh, is equal to uh, dimension of Z of this here. In which G0 is rigid. So the rank is zero if and only if uh, 
uh, pass is just single, I reach it no quantum total. Uh, although this geometric, in fact, S is not actually a fine variety, but it turns out that the geometric quotient is a fine. And uh, for that one needs the result of Katsuiwa, which was later improved by Inkhoff, by purely algebraic, algebraic method. So one needs here P sufficiently large. So one, one needs uh, slowly this slice to be really a slice. Uh, so Katsuiwa proved uh, the following theorem. So if you take S, and intersect it with the slowly slice E plus G. Of course, we take E an important element in S. And it's unique after conjugacy. And we intersect this uh, with the slowly slice. And then uh, the variety is going to be equidimensional. Of course, each component will, will contain, uh, uh, will contain <coughs> Uh, e, x1, x, say, t, uh, which depends on x. And then uh, this group, of course, we have this reductive group C, e, c, e, bar. So the connected component of this, which is quite uh, interesting, I x3, um, uh, x3 on this intersection. And, uh, and so therefore we have the action of the component group. And gamma permutes uh, this component that uh, size uh, transitive. So uh, yeah, if I call this, uh, let's call this intersection X, uh, X E, then so, also, he proved that this geometric quotient is isomorphic to the epsilon gamma. And this variety is a fine. A fine variety. So, <coughs> now <coughs> I can state the result on dimension of uh, variety E, well, at least. Uh, In general, I don't know what it is, but at least I can uh, compute the crew dimension. So let us impose a temporary assumption, which I'm going to remove later. So suppose uh, that uh, uh, you have an E0 admits <coughs> suppose each finite W algebra uh, admits one dimensional representation uh, for, for all proper levels of uh, For all proper levels of algebra of G. And we already know that true EFG is classic. But later on we'll see it also true for G exception. So under this assumption, uh, so if, if Y is an affine variety, is a variety, so that uh, cone of Y denotes a set of all reducible components. Over reducible components. Uh, <coughs> it's just a finite set. <laughs> and then uh, there is a theorem which one can prove by, by characteristic P methods. Uh, so <coughs> there is a, a subjection. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe I should say uh, 
Well, stat is in your plot and element uh, in G. And uh, it, this may belong to different shapes. There are many such examples. Uh, and that uh, S1, ST, the old sheets, this can contain it. intersection of uh, that side is, is a slope side. And so these varieties are not in general. Sorry? Sorry, so I didn't understand why uh, and nipple dependent can belong to different sheets. Yes. I mean, the sheet is defined as the dimension of the centralizer. Yes, uh, the sheet, no, no. The sheets are irreducible components of this, of sets oh, GM. GM is not all this. It's, uh, was are fine, but it can be reduced. Oh, okay. And the irreducible components are called sheets, but they can overlap. And if the sheets overlap, mm -hmm. you know, irreducible components of variety can intersect. Okay. If they overlap, then this nilpotent orbit will live in both. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so then we define the side. Then, uh, then the following holds. So then, uh, there is a subjection, but not a general bijection, possibly. There is a subjection from uh, something that uh, we want to know, the irreducible components of E, this variety which parameterizes one-dimensional new J module, to this joint union of components, components of X1, X1 itself can be reducible, but all components have the same dimension. Uh, components of Xt uh, such that uh, so it's a bijection, a subjection, such that uh, uh, well, let's call it uh, say beta, uh, uh, such that. Uh, for each, uh, uh, for each y, uh, it belongs to component. Uh, this belongs to the free image of the component set of x i. Uh, we have the dimension of y is less than or equal to the dimension of x i. And the dimension of x i, by the way, is equal to the rank of s i of the corresponding sheet. They all have the same. Like that's it was So moreover, uh, and there exists, and there exists uh, y i in this set uh, for every i. Whose dimension is equal to the dimension of y is, is equal to the rank of the So we don't know uh, we don't know uh, how many components this variety have, but at least you know as, at least as many as the total number of components here. What do you mean by the rank of the well, now, at the moment, we, we work under this assumption. So we, we work under the assumption that uh, all proper ladies ad, uh, have W algebras that admit one-dimensional representation. So under this assumption, uh, we have uh, uh, this description of components of E. And uh, so finally, from this, it follows that the, cruel dim the dimension of this variety is equal to maximal dimension of SI, maximal dimension of S, uh, sorry, rank, not dimension, but rank. 
uh, uh, where E belongs to it and S is a shift. So we know, we know the dimensional variety under this assumption and we have uh, an estimate for the number of reducible components. We also know that this variety is reducible provided that E belongs to at least two different shapes. So it cannot be reduced. Uh -huh. so, yeah, I've forgotten the definition of rank. What is it? Rank is a dimension. Rank is actually a dimension of Xi. Uh, rank of S uh, is a dimension of this geometric quotient S mod G, which happens to be the same as dimension of X uh, mod gamma. But of course, gamma is a finite group. So therefore, it's the same as dimension of X. So if E is rigid, then this is just a finite set, but we don't know at the moment whether it's empty or not. But for uh, classical types, it's not. Right. Now, uh, this map is just a, sorry? This map is just a map of sets. It's just a map of sets, yes. But uh, it comes from a certain morphism which exists in characteristic P, or P very big, yes. It can't, there is a finite morphism, but I just didn't have time to explain. But my reading is to use more meaning action to prove this. And one has to use cuts by spider conjecture. And one has to use this uh, uh, reduction uh, to the important case thing that I mentioned briefly. Okay. So, however, one can prove that. Uh, so, in the listen, dimension V is the maximum or what? Uh, dimension of E is a maximal, maximal rank of sheets that contain E. Ah, yes. So there will be finite, there are altogether finitely many of these sheets because there are finitely many GMs. And some of them will contain E, and so it takes just maximal rank. Uh, so uh, in fact, A. Um, <coughs> so in type A, uh, each E, uh, this is a result of uh, graph, I think. Uh, uh, each new potent element E lies uh, in a unique shape. Uh, so any new potent element is Richardson uh, in type A. And this is how you obtain the shape. Uh, so, uh, and uh, using uh, random threshold description. Of U S L M E. Uh, I'll tell you describe this final W algebra uh, by uh, generators and relations and they prove it is truncated, uh, shifted young young. One shows that, uh, so one shows uh, that uh, UG abelia of uh, this algebra is actually a polynomial algebra. Uh, it's isomorphic to K, oh, sorry, C, uh, X1, X4, and one can say what R is. Or maybe I should say D, where D plus 1 uh, is the size of the largest Jordan block of it, regarding to the matrix. It is, a, it is, a, uh, is the size of the largest Jordan block. So for instance, if E is a uh, regular new potent, then it's just one single Jordan block, and we know that this algebra is a uh, community. So we have, uh, but this is uh, uh, a general fact. So we see that not only if uh, E belongs to a single uh, sheet, uh, then the algebra is actually polynomial, or does not have uh, new potent elements already. And so we looked at, uh, at this picture for classical type with this uh, US copy in a recent journey for
Uh, now, uh, so what, what, sorry, what are the rigids in, in type A? Sorry? What are the rigids? Zero. There is only, zero is always rigid, uh, is always rigid in any algebra, and this is the only rigid element. Okay. This follows from the fact that any element is, uh, is rigid. So. so it is induced from zero. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, I forgot to say that if E is, uh, yeah, I wanted to say it. So the reason one uh, introduces this induced, so if E is induced uh, from E0 in a Levy, in a Levy, then when one has the dimension of the centralizer of E, that's a very important property of induced elements, is equal to the dimension of the centralizer of E0 in a Levy. Although these algebras are not isomorphic, but dimensions agree. So that's very useful to know. There's this uh, <coughs> equality of dimensions of central lines. Um, now, uh, so, uh, so there's a definition that we, uh, uh, we use in the paper, this, uh, this new stopping. I'm going to talk about joint work is used, uh, which appeared in composition very recently. So we say E is uh, uh, so an important element is one singular. Is one singular if uh, if it belongs to a single ship. Uh, if it belongs. So in, uh, for classical time, so when G is classical, uh, Imhoff proved that all sheets are smooth varieties. It's a non-trivial result. So all sheets are smooth. It's not, all, not always true for exceptional time. So this is the result of Imhoff who was a student of Kraft. And uh, so, uh, therefore, we, we use this uh, name on singular means in this case that uh, it's just a, a, a smooth point of one of the uh, GFs. So it belongs being on a, uh, on a single chip uh, means that it is a non-singular point on one of these varieties GF. And hence this name. Uh, there is a combinatorial description of, uh, of non-singular elements in classical uh, Lie algebras, but I think there will be probably more time uh, to mention it. So we prove the following theorem. Uh, uh, suppose G is classical. G is classical. So types A, B, C, D. Then uh, uh, E is uh, uh, non singular uh, if and only if the abelian quotient or commutative quotient of QG is a polynomial. Uh, so in this case, uh, so in particular, E is, uh, e is irreducible, so E is isomorphic to uh, an affine space. And we know its dimension. And as I, say, uh, as I said, uh, there is a combinatorial description of uh, non singular elements. But there are not that many, because there are lots of uh, new quadrant orbits in classical reality. Uh -huh. uh, yes, because it's a polynomial algebra, therefore E is isomorphic to a fine spectrum. It's a maximal spectrum. Uh -huh. yes. So in this case, uh, the picture here that I will simplify is dramatically. Just only one. Uh, uh, all excites actually, this implies that all excites are irreducible varieties themselves. 
uh, it's just not automatic. And um, there is only one component. And there are no this, uh, mysterious components of dimension zero. Uh, now, uh, there is what a, say? There is only one. Yes. There is only one. Yes, precisely. But not even if there is one sheet, it's not immediate that there is only one, uh, there is only one exon. Because the intersection of a sheet is a slice could split into several components. They're muted by gravity. This does not happen in this case. So the intersection with the slice is irreducible if you have this condition. <clears throat> now we also, we can introduce uh, the following idea. So uh, let I gamma be uh, uh, the ideal of uh, UGE abelian generated by generated by <coughs> O U minus U gamma where U is in UGE abelian and gamma is in gamma. So here I should say that uh, <clears throat> the group one, bit, one has to be, but it has to be proven. But uh, the connected component of the reductive part actually adds trivially. So what really adds on, on, on this uh, algebra is the component. And then we take uh, the idea of generated by all such elements, and then we, we set u uh, uh, g p abelian gamma to be the quotient of uh, UG abelian by this idea. So the spectrum of, of this algebra parameterizes really parameterizes multiplicity free primitive ideas. So that uh, uh, one can show that uh, the spectrum of UG abelian gamma is isomorphic to E gamma. So this is the fixed points. The fixed points, uh, uh, the uh, gamma fixed points. Of E with respect to gamma. So gamma also acts on the maximal spectrum of UG abelian, and this is a closed sub variety of E. Now then we also prove the following theorem. Uh, now, uh, in this paper, So uh, for any uh, uh, for any new pattern P in G classical uh, U G abelian gamma, this is a morphic to a polynomial. This is a polynomial. And we determine uh, the dimension of this. So, uh, so this fixed point is an affine space. Uh, and we know the dimension uh, of this affine space. Uh, so, corollary of this result is uh, E gamma is, uh, is a single point. Which means to find a W algebra admits a unique uh, admits a unique one-dimensional gamma stable representation uh, if and only if uh, <coughs> uh, E corresponds to a partition lambda one lambda ten. So not all partitions are allowed for classical types. So lambda one given. 
from the Ionic Sea to the one. Uh, and um, lambda i minus lambda i plus 1 is either 0 or 1. So all parts are curved in this partition. And we call such, uh, uh, such elements almost rigid. But all rigid elements have this, satisfy this condition by Kempton's Halton state, plus one extra condition. But if you remove this extra condition, then we obtain those by uh, important elements for which he gamma is a single point. Now, most of this result also extends to uh, exceptional types. But we couldn't, so this generalizes to exceptional type, but we couldn't handle, uh, I think, five orders, let me mention it. And this, these orders are really exceptional. So this, uh, this description extends, I mean, for UG abelian and uh, UG gamma, abelian gamma, extends to G of exceptional type. For all E, uh, except Except the following, so we have F4, and uh, there is an important orbit uh, with Lincoln labeled C3A1. So it is, uh, there is a uh, Lewis algebra of type C3 in F4, and we take a uh, subregular element in there. So in this case, this is a really exceptional case because Jonathan Brown visited Birmingham this summer, and he used computer to show that variety is not actually dimensional in this case. Although, uh, in this, for this important element, uh, the element is not simple. So it belongs to a unique sheet in this case. But are the sheets containing it smooth, or is uh, it known? That I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you know the dimensions of the reduced components? Uh, Do any of the dimensions here? There is, yes. Uh, I think there is one, one uh, the crew dimension is one in this case of the algebra E, but I think there is a zero dimensional component. Maybe even for E gamma. But it's not yet written up. He, he just, he visited Manchester here. Uh, in Fort one can do it. It's very hard to deal with these cases because for the, for the other ones, he tried to do it, but the computer wasn't big enough. Uh, there is also one port that we couldn't handle in type uh, E6, A3, plus A1. And this is also a single shape case. But we, we couldn't prove uh, the polymerality of E in this case. And it's one, just one case in IP7. Now, I, I'm only talking about rigid or uh, about induced orbits here. Because the rigid ones have to be handled differently. And uh, of course, E8 uh, has more than one exception. So we have Again, we have D6 and 2, and we have D7 and 2, and we have D7 and 2. All these orbits are really nasty, so it's not. So, six. Mm -hmm. so it's D7 and 2. Uh, so, in this case, for induced orbits, we don't know what E is, and we don't know what E gamma is. And there might be uh, well, some zero-dimensional components which could bring some new completely parameter into ideas. And finally, <coughs> so uh, let me uh, state the theory of uh, uh, now suppose G is, now this was proved by very recently uh, in my paper published in the transformation group. It's a special issue dedicated to Dinkia. Uh, so G exceptional uh, and uh, E region. So one, one wants to show that uh, E gamma is non-empty and then we have the following. Uh, 
in this case, P is equal to P gamma, uh, and uh, P is moment. So, <coughs> I also uh, computed uh, the corresponding highest weights. So uh, for, uh, uh, for one-dimensional representations, uh, a complete uh, multiplicity-free primitive ideal has a form i is equal to i lambda. And uh, I was able to determine this is, uh, is computed. in all cases. It turned out to be uh, actually uh, an interesting thing. So what happens that uh, it turned out that uh, if, uh, if E is special region, special in the sense of listing, then uh, uh, one, can, one always has uh, lambda is given by uh, barbash schwoben recipe. So lambda is equal to 1 half h chet minus 1. I will explain what it is. So uh, if E is special, then we have the cell to triple EHF, or E is rigid, and via <coughs> Spaltenstein uh, duality there is Another result to triple E check, H check, F check, and this belongs to the Lentman's Bureau, uh, Realgy, and this belongs to G. So Barbash and Bogan observed that if E is rigid, so E rigid implies that E check is distinguished. Now well, it's just an observation, that's very interesting one, well, but this implies, you know, all distinguished elements are uh, even, so therefore the check is even. And this implies that one half h check uh, alpha v. Now this uh, actually is, is a linear function now. Uh, uh, yeah, I should say maybe I should. <coughs> so th th this is a linear function on h, so uh, yes, I can evaluate it like this. That belongs to Z for all of for all of itself. And therefore, uh, we can regard this uh, as an integral uh, highest weight of some module. Uh, and it turns out that the corresponding primitive idea is always multiplicity free. Uh, Barbash and Bogan proved that it has the right uh, associated variety, but uh, Multiplicity free property was not known. And it also holds for classical types by a result of this, which just appeared in the so, um, I guess at some point I would have to stop anyway. Uh, why not now? Uh, since I'm the last uh, speaker, I would just like to thank the organizers for this really wonderful uh, school. I really enjoyed lecturing here. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the audience for being attentive and criti critical. <laughs> <laughs>